In this video, I want to look at uh, four sections of Young and Friedman's University Physics. These are fairly preparatory, and if you've had any background in high school math or science, probably uh, there won't be much uh, of a surprise in these sections. So for, exact, uh, for example, in, in uh, section three of chapter one, he talks about units. Of course, the units that are used in uh, science are typically uh, uh, an international standard, uh, SI, you know, you might ask, well, why is it SI instead of IS? That's because it's, um, it's based on the French uh, version of it, which uh, puts the adjective after the noun, uh, something like système international, and I don't remember exactly what it is, but, but basically that's why it's SI instead of IS. But it's a, uh, a generally accepted standard uh, in the scientific community especially, um, uh, the United States has been uh, resistant to uh, kilometers and, and uh, a lot of some of those uh, measurements. Uh, we like the way you know we, we like the way we do it, uh, and of course uh, the rest of the world in that sense um, is a little bit uh, its popular society is a little bit closer to uh, the scientific age than uh, Americans are on the whole. Uh, but um, nevertheless, anybody who studies science quickly learns to use meters and, and those sorts of, of units of measurements which are the standard uh, across the globe when it comes to uh, science and math and so forth. Um, for physical quantities, the international system, uh, the second, of course we use the second in, in America as well. Uh, for length, however, the, the uh, uni uh, universal standard is the meter and for mass, the universal standard is the kilogram. Of course in America in the United States, that is, we still use pounds because we don't like to give up our um, our way of doing the old way of doing things. Of course, um, uh, Jimmy Carter, as president, tried to move us a little bit into the scientific age, but we uh, successfully resisted him. Uh, but if you're going to do anything in science in the world that that uh, where it counts, uh, you're going to have to learn to use meters and uh, kilograms. Um, the prefixes are. Uh, fairly familiar also. If something is a kilogram or a kilometer, kilometer, uh, then it's a thousand times the base. So if a meter is the standard unit, a kilometer is a thousand meters or uh, 10 to the third power, where of course that three means how many zeros you put. Um, a centimeter is going the other direction. If a kilo adds, uh, multiplies a thousand, uh, a centi is one hundredth, so you divide it by a hundred. And that negative two there, ten to the negative two power means uh, that you are two zeros, um, or shall we, not two zeros, but two decimal places uh, to the right uh, of, the, of the normal. So uh, if a meter is the standard, then a centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. A millimeter then would be one thousandth of a meter, move it over to the right, the decimal point, three places. Um, similarly, a micrometer or a micrometer would be moving it six places uh, to the right uh, of the decimal point. And uh, in our age where we um, can, can s uh, look at smaller and smaller things, a nanosecond um, is uh, uh, nine decimal places to the right, a very, 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 very small uh, portion of a second. Um, so those are the, the general units that are used in, in science, and of course uh, there are many more uh, units uh, that uh, will be found as you go through the rest of uh, university physics by Young and Friedman. Um, section 1-4, or you know, section 1-3, um, is about converting units. This is something you did in high school, maybe even in middle school, um, and it's something uh, that uh, you'll need to do in physics as well. It is very similar to canceling out factors from numerators and uh, denominators. So uh, if you look at the fraction problem there at the bottom, um, now you could just go ahead and multiply it out. 3 times 2 is 6, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, so you have 6 twelfths, which is reduces to 1 half. You can do it that way, and in this case, it's not that hard to do. But what you you are of course learn in in middle school or high school is that if you have like the same factor in the numerator on the top as in the denominator on the bottom, you can cancel it out. 
So in this case, the threes cancel out. Um, uh, and in, the, in this case, the two is half of four. So the two cancels out and the four becomes two. So the three is canceled out, the two is canceled out, the four has become two, and the three is canceled out. So now we just have one over two, one half. That's just an easier way, often an easier way to um, multiply uh, than, um, than multiplying it all out and then reducing. Um, you can do this with units, sometimes called the factor label method. I don't think that Young and Friedman call it that. Uh, but basically, you can cancel out the labels uh, or for in, in effect. So for example, if you have something in meters per second and you want to know meters per minute, then if you multiply the meters per second by seconds per minute, uh, for example, 60 seconds per minute, um, then you'll end up with meters per minute. And you can see that the labels cancel. You have a second in the bottom and you have a second in the top. Those cancel out. And so the meter comes over and the minute comes over and you have minutes uh, per meter. Um, Young and Friedman uh, rightly, as any science book would, uh, encourage you and uh, to put the, um, the labels, meter, second, so forth, along with the numbers. Don't just put the numbers, but put the units that you're measuring with. That will keep things, you'll be able to keep things straight in that case. And of course, sometimes you, uh, you have to, d to divide by things uh, to get rid of certain um, labels. Um, you can, sometimes it's not just a straight multiplication to get it in the form you want. Sometimes you have to, to uh, d divide um, in order to, to get it to work. Uh, but those are all things that uh, harken back to middle school and high school algebra. Section 1.5 then uh, is about uncertainty and significant figures. Um, the symbol plus or minus sometimes indicates the point where a figure, a number, becomes uncertain. So 5.32532 plus or minus 0. 0.00001 tells you uh, that the the first um, uh, five numbers there, the first five are the significant figures. Those are the ones that you're, are solid. The five is solid, the three, the two, the five, the three, those are all solid. It's the last one, the two there, the, the two, let's see, we have tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. The two one hundred thousandths position is is uncertain uh, by one one hundred thousandth. That means that the range of, of accuracy uh, relates to 5.32531 to 5.32533. That somewhere in there is um, is the, the accurate answer, but we're uncertain given this figure uh, when it comes to that last one uh, one hundred thousandth um, of whatever unit it would happen to be, and I didn't put a unit with this number. Um, this indicates the accuracy of the number. Now, uh, this has five significant figures, as I said, because the last one is uncertain. You do count the numbers in front of the decimal when you're counting significant figures. Um, uh, so five of those digits are significant figures, but the last one is not because we're not certain whether it's uh, correct or not. Um, precision is something different from accuracy. Accuracy has to do with the extent to which a number is correct. Precision has to do with how detailed the number is in relation to normal. Um, often the more decimal points, the more precise. Uh, so for example, uh, Young and Friedman give the example of, of perhaps uh, a time that would be one point, you know, I'm making up the number now, 1.567 seconds. Now, that's a very precise um, thing with regard to time because in normal operations we think of time, you know, even seconds is somewhat detailed when it comes to time. We might say, I'll meet you on Thursday or I'll meet you, you know, around five o'clock. Um, so even, even seconds are somewhat precise. So for someone to say that it's, you know, 2.35 seconds, that's very precise in terms of how detailed it is. But it could be completely wrong, of course. So something can be very precise and yet be completely inaccurate. So I could say, you know, he fell down at, at 5.43.3 uh, o'clock, you know, on Thursday. But if it was actually on Monday, I've given you a very precise but inaccurate um, number. Um, sometimes precision is desired. Sometimes it really doesn't matter. Um, 
but um, uh, you know, in a perfect world, I suppose that you would be both accurate and precise. Um, scientific notation. Uh, here's an example. This is a very, very precise and very, very accurate uh, sense of the speed of light. So the speed of light is exactly 299,792,480 meters per second. That is exactly the speed of light. It is, it is, in, it is entirely precise and entirely accurate. Um, now, using scientific notation, um, we might uh, not worry too much about that much detail. It might not, it's usually, you know, it's usually not necessary to speak of the speed of light in that, in that detail. We might simply say that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. Now that is not precise, but it's accurate. Um, it's accurate uh, in terms of the way we would normally uh, talk about the speed of light. The speed of light is, is very, very close to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters uh, per second. That, that's not precise, but it's an accurate um, uh, rendition. And again, the eight, 10 to the 8th means that we have 8 decimal places uh, to the left uh, of the decimal point. Um, now, finally, uh, in section 1-6, uh, he talks a little about estimates. Uh, like I said, it's, it's often not necessary. In fact, sometimes it's, it's quite... Um, uh, counterproductive to be very very precise and so um, in, in some cases when you're dealing with for example uh, something on the level of 10 to the 8th like the speed of light you know knowing what the the tens place is is completely unimportant uh, unless you're doing some very fine calculation and so um, sometimes you you it's it's just as good to estimate and and sometimes we have to estimate uh, because many parts of physics deal with probability rather than uh, certainty in, in some uh, respects. And so um, uh, this is a very short section in Young and Friedman, uh, but they talk about what Enrico Fermi called back of the em envelope ca calculations, where you maybe round a bunch of stuff off uh, to get the general sense of, of what the answer is rather than what the answer is uh, exactly. And so this has been uh, sections uh, 3 through 6 of Young and Friedman's University Physics in the first chapter, uh, which deals with uh, generally introductory matters.